to mark the world's end, God the Almighty will order Angel Israfil to blow a trumpet to announce the arrival of this fateful day. At the blast of the trumpet, a blast will be heard so horrendous and terrifying that the inhabitants of the heavens and the earth will all fall on conscience, except those whom Allah wills. The mountains will be lifted, crushed and crumbled into pieces, likening wool. The sky above will split open and crack piece by piece. The oceans will boil over as they burn in flames. The planets, the moon, the stars will fall from their orbits, losing their shine. Darkness will commence everywhere. The earth will shake in a terrifying quake, flattening and leveling with no peaks or throats. Every living thing will cease to exist. Then Allah will command his angel to blow the trumpet for a second time, and a violent earthquake will erupt, causing the graves to split open, and all of the creation from the beginning of time will be resurrected. And the trumpet will be blown, i.e. for the second blowing, and behold, for the graves they will come out quickly to their Lord. Then God will replace this earth and heavens with another creation. Every deceased person will rise up from their grave, reclaiming their original body, bones and body parts will be reassembled in their original form. Just as God created everything the first time, He will do it again. People will rush out from their graves so quickly in chaos, terrified and confused. A child's hair will turn gray and their face will wrinkle from fear. A nursing mother will forget her child and a pregnant woman will miscarry. People will run about in chaos as if they were drunk, but they are not drunk, but the punishment of Allah is severe. They will say, O oh, woe to us, who has raised us from our sleeping place? This is what the Most Merciful had promised, and the messengers spoke the truth. On this day, a man will flee from his brother, mother, father, spouse, and children who are nearest and dearest to him, even as they beg for help. Man will think only of himself, terrified as his soul peers into the eyes of infinity. God will gather all mankind naked, barefooted, and uncircumcised, including both the believers and non-believers, all jinns and all animals, all of whom will be brought to a plain known as the place of gathering. No one will speak, and heads will be lowered in humility, as they hear only footsteps. Everyone will be stripped of the titles and roles which they held in their worldly lives. The kings, the presidents, the millionaires, the poor, the slaves, all will be lined up before their Lord, regardless of the ranks and classes they possessed throughout the course of their worldly life. The area will be so overcrowded with humans, jinn, and animals all pressing each other that every individual would be crowded into the space covered by their own two feet. People will stand nervously, waiting for judgment, and mankind will perspire in agony. Anxiety levels will run so high that not a single person will be able to sit down on this frightening day. As humankind awaits the decree of the Almighty, the sun will descend so low above their heads, it will linger a mile away, and each person will sweat according to the level and intensity of their good and bad deeds. Some will sink to their own ankles in their own perspiration, while others would sink to their thighs and waist and still others would drown in their own sweat, flowing up to their mouths. The only souls that will be shaded will be the seven levels of righteous people who will be granted shade during this traumatic day, in which there will be no other shade but the shade of Allah's magnificent throne. On this day, Allah the Exalted will gift Prophet Muhammad a pond called Kautar, one located in the courtyard of the place of gathering, where the water is whiter than milk and sweeter than honey. He will drink from the pond and invite the believers and the righteous of his nation, those who died in the way of Allah and his messenger, to drink from the same pool. A personal invitation will be required to drink, and Prophet Muhammad will recognize the righteous of his nation by the foreheads, hands, and limbs rendered bright and shiny from the effects of their wudu, ablution that is performed before prayer to remove impurities of the body. Those who reach this pool would drink from it and quench their thirst permanently. Judgment Day will equal 50,000 years in duration of our time, but for the believers, it will only feel like the time elapsed between the Asr to Maghrib prayer, which is roughly a couple of hours. For the unbelievers and the wrongdoers, conditions on this day will be intense and unbearable. This is due to the terror, the heat, the standing, and the thirst prevalent during this time. All of mankind, including Muslims, Christians, and 
Jews from all nations will reunite together, and some will exclaim, Let us ask somebody to intercede for us, and ask our Lord to begin the accountability. Then all of mankind will rush to Prophet Adam and ask, O Prophet Adam, you are the father of all mankind, whom Allah created with his own hands. Please intercede for us. Prophet Adam will respond, Myself, myself, I am not fit for this. I fear the same thing you fear, as I disobeyed my Lord once. And today my Lord is in a state of anger, which he has never been before. Please go to Prophet Noah. Then mankind will go to Prophet Noah, who will respond the same to the effect, Myself, myself, I cannot do this. Go to Prophet Adam. Then mankind will go to Prophet Adam, then to Prophet Musa, then to Prophet Jesus. Prophet Jesus will then respond, I am not fit for this, as people took me for a god, and I have to answer to that. Finally, all of mankind will reach Prophet Muhammad, who will respond, This is what Allah has favored me for, and the only intercession I'll be able to give is on behalf of my nation who followed me. As for the nations before me, they will need to go after their prophets. And as for the disbelievers and the ones that worshipped other than Allah, they will need to follow those who they followed and worshipped in their worldly life. Prophet Muhammad will then prostrate to his Lord and praise his Lord with the words inspired within him by God. God the Almighty then will say, O oh Muhammad, lift your head and ask for anything and I will give you. Prophet Muhammad then will respond, O oh my Lord, save my nation, save my nation. Then judgment day will begin. God will call upon each individual to stand before him, to judge and question him or her according to his or her faith, how they live their life and their worldly actions with no translator or interpreter needed. The conversation will involve only you and your Lord, who will judge yourself and your deeds. Each individual will be held accountable for every action they took, said, and intended all of which were recorded in accurate records by our assigned angels. The first thing that will be questioned is whether each person performed their mandatory prayers. Additionally, each individual will be asked terrifying questions about how he or she lived their life, utilized their youth, earned and spent their wealth, and what one did with the knowledge they acquired. One will be reminded and informed of the good and bad deeds they have done. On that day, one would either meet the mercy of God or the justice of God. As the disbelievers will try to argue and lie their way out of their deserved punishment, God will seal their mouths, hands, feet, ears, skin, and body parts, with these body parts testifying against them as the surprise witnesses of their actions. Their body parts will complain to God, their master, and how that person made them sin. That day, we will seal over their mouths and their hands will speak to us, and their feet will testify about what they used to earn. The disbelievers will ask their body parts why they bear witness against them, to which they will respond, God, who gave speech to all things, has made us speak. Everyone shall be dealt with according to their deeds and actions. No injustice or transgression will occur on this day, not even for the disbeliever or the evilest of people. When the reckoning is complete, books of each individual's records and deeds will fly to each person. Everyone will be given his or her book that will contain records of all the deeds he or she performed in their life. And then the record of their deeds shall be placed before them, and you will see the guilty full of fear for what it contains, and will say, Woe to us! What a record this is! It leaves nothing big or small, but it encompasses it. They will find their deeds confronting them. Your Lord wrongs no one. The believer will be given his book in his right hand as a sign of honor. The one who will receive his record in his right hand will undergo an untroubled audit. His sins will be overlooked and he will return to his people rejoiced. As for him who is given his book in his right hand, he will say, Here, take and read my book. Indeed, I was sure I would have to face my reckoning one day. So he will have a pleasant life in an elevated garden whose clusters of fruits will be within easy reach. He will be told, eat and drink pleasantly for what you did before in the days gone by. As for the disbeliever, the wrongdoer, he or she will receive their book in their left hand or from behind their back. 
receiving the worst kind of auditing with full regret, wishing he or she were dead as they anticipate their descent into the hellfire. But as for he who was given his record in his left hand, he will say, Oh, I wish I had not been given my record and not had been known what is in my account. I wish the death that I had suffered in the world was the final death. My wealth had not availed me, and my power has perished from me. It will be ordered, seize him and shackle him, then into the hellfire drive him, then into a chain whose length is seventy cubits insert him. Indeed, he did not used to believe in God, the Most High, nor did he encourage the feeding of the poor. So there is none for him here this day any devoted friend, nor any food except from the discharge of wounds. None will eat it except the sinners. Then the scales intended for weighing people's deeds will be presented for view, a balancing scale which is real and accurate in its results. No deed even of an atom's weight of importance will be overlooked, whether it took the form of cursing, backbiting, stealing, or something that was done or said for the good of helping someone. A person's good deeds will be placed in one pan, and his evil deeds in the other. If his good deeds outweigh the evil, then with God's mercy, success and salvation will be rewarded for that individual. If one's evil deeds outweigh his good deeds, then he or she will be condemned to the hellfire for a severe punishment. Then Allah will destroy all light and pure darkness will fall everywhere so dark that if one placed his hands in front of his face, he would not be able to see it. Paradise will lay on one side, and in order to reach it, one would have to cross a very narrow bridge. A bridge so narrow, it would stand thinner than hair and sharper than a knife. Under the bridge, it will burn the hellfire. People will need to pass this bridge with the aid of his or her light which would be shining from their bodies in accordance with the belief in righteousness they presented in their lives. Some people reflect very strong bright lights emanating from their bodies and will pass the bridge in a blink of an eye. Every act of worship accepted by God will be transformed into light on that day. Our Prophet stated, Convey glad tidings to those who walk to the mosque in the darkness, for they will be given full light on the day of resurrection. Others will emanate only enough light to see one step ahead. Some will crawl, and some will fall into the hellfire. This slippery bridge has thrones and hooks that will snare people, and the soul will struggle and fight against the fall. The one that does not deserve to pass the bridge will fall, and those who successfully cross the bridge will approach paradise. The prophets will wait on the other side, praying to God to save their nations. Amongst the people will stand the hypocrites who will ask the believers to share their lights so they can pass over the bridge and they will be told in response, get your own light. The final stage before the admission to paradise is what's known as the Qantara, where one would have to make amends with the people they harmed or wronged in their life. Those to whom they never made amends or of whom they never asked forgiveness. If a person was wronged and did not receive justice from his abuser, he finally would see justice by benefiting from some of that person's good deeds, which would adjust the level of paradise they enter. On the day of judgment, the hellfire will be conjured by 70,000 angels and every single person will ponder and reflect on the quality of his or her life. But of what purpose will this remembrance and recounting serve at that point? Those who fell into worship of false deities those who denied the belief of God and those who lived a wicked and evil life of sin will be condemned eternally to the hellfire. They will be led into the hellfire by the idols and false gods they followed and worshipped to receive their everlasting torture, punishment, pain and disgrace. The hellfire is a place of unimaginable and immense suffering, extreme blazing temperatures and unquenchable thirst, a place prepared for the disbelievers. They will feel remorse and terror as they beg for safety and forgiveness, but it will be too late. Indeed, we have warned you of a near punishment on the day when a man will observe what his hands have put forth, and the disbeliever will say, Oh, I wish I were dust. As for the sinful believers, they will be placed into the hellfire in accordance with their sins, but only to be cleansed from all their sins and eventually sent to paradise. As for the ones that believed and worshipped God alone and lived a righteous life, 
they will be rewarded generously and warmly welcome to God's paradise, where they will live eternally in a garden of physical pleasures and spiritual delights, where every wish shall be granted. The people of paradise will reside in beautiful mansions where rivers will flow beneath them. They will know no disease, sickness, hardship, pain, sorrow, or animosity, as God will remove all ill feelings from the people's hearts. A place of riches, servants, streams of wine that does not intoxicate, milk that never changes in flavor, honey of utmost purity, which is pleasant in color, taste, and smell, water which does not brackish, pleasant fragrances, and pure, gorgeous partners. Never will a person of paradise ever feel tiredness, exhaustion, boredom, nor will they ever taste death again. Additionally, the believers will be rewarded with the greatest bliss of all, which will be the honor of looking upon the holy and beautiful face of God. The unbelievers will be deprived of this vision. Say, the enjoyment of this world is little, and the hereafter is better for he who fears Allah. Faith in the last day, resurrection and judgment day are fundamental beliefs that Muslims must hold in order to complete their faith. Everything that the Almighty creates and does has a purpose, including the creation of each of our lives. God states in the Quran, Do you think that we have created you for no reason, and that to us you would not be returned? God proves life after death in many ways. As stated in the Quran, amongst his proofs is a moral and ethical argument. Certain evil people in this world would have gotten away with horrific crimes, and good people have lived difficult lives. If a person was wrong and did not see justice in his or her life, God would give him justice on that day. Without Judgment Day, unconvicted mass murderers would never be punished and life would be unfair. Everyone shall be judged and justice shall be served. God states in his book, Do the evildoers think that we will make them like those who believed and done righteous deeds in their life and in their death? Bad, indeed, is their judgment. If God created mankind the first time, why wouldn't he be able to create mankind the second time? To recreate mankind the second time will be even easier. Mankind has already witnessed the Almighty's first creation, in which people were created from soil. The creation of the heavens and the earth is greater than the creation of mankind. He who is able to create a vast and complex world is certainly able to raise the dead. Amongst Allah's signs of life after death is the continuous resurrection of plants and vegetation. Every year we observe the phenomenon of dead land with no vegetation, with land having died in the winter only to return to life in the spring. God asks man to ponder over the situation of seeds placed on the earth. When water and earth surround the seeds, they logically should decompose. As opposed to opening and splitting into a root that grows out of the ground, producing magnificent life forms like trees and plants. These are all signs of Allah's power, infinite wisdom, and the capabilities of bringing about life after death. The Holy Qur'an has over 40 names of Judgment Day. Amongst his name is the Day of Standing, since everyone will be too nervous to sit. The Day of Accounting, the Day of Sorting Out, the Day of Eternity, the Day of Meeting, and the Hour. Judgment Day will be such a heavy, difficult day that every page of the Qur'an mentions Judgment Day, either directly or indirectly. The Qur'an contains many vivid descriptions of Judgment Day. It is a true blessing that one can acquire knowledge about Judgment Day and its severity now so that he or she can prepare themselves adequately for this great day. The possession of faith in life after death encourages us one to righteous deeds, to fear God, to increase God consciousness and to avoid wrongdoing. O oh, you who have believed, protect yourselves and your families from the hellfire whose fuel is people and stones. Do not stand amongst people that have convinced themselves that Judgment Day is far away and that they don't have to prepare themselves for this fateful occurrence. O you who have believed, fear Allah and let every soul look to what it has put forth for tomorrow. And fear Allah, indeed Allah is acquainted to what you do. Our Prophet narrated, whoever guides another to a good deed 
will get a reward similar to the one who performs it. So please like, subscribe, and share this video. Assalamu alaikum.